The Trust Center showcases Microsoft's principles for maintaining data integrity in the cloud and how Microsoft implements and supports security, privacy, compliance, and transparency in all Microsoft Cloud products and services. The Trust Center provides in-depth information about security, privacy, compliance, offerings, policies, features, and practices across Microsoft Cloud products. It also provides additional resources for each topic. The Trust Center has links to the security, privacy, and compliance blogs and upcoming events. The Trust Center is a great resource for other people in your organization who might play a role in security, privacy, and compliance. These people include business managers, risk assessment, and privacy officers, and legal compliance teams. In Windows 2000, Microsoft introduced Active Directory domain services to enable businesses to manage multiple on-premises infrastructure elements and systems with a single user identity. Here's an architectural diagram. You have your enterprise, which is the forest here, and these are made up of domains. A domain is a means to host these different directory services. It is also the means to which people authorize to your directory. You can think of these domains as actual servers and you're going to have to have redundant ones, which are the child domains. Because if the main one goes down, you want to make sure you can still log in and do their business and you might want domains that are closer to the region to which they are authenticating. When we look inside of a domain, it doesn't matter if it's the child or domain, we have organizational units and these are just ways of structuring things like departments and with an organizational unit, we have objects, objects being groups, printer servers, things like that. Managed service for Microsoft Active Directory is an Active Directory hosted on the Google Cloud Platform. The features of the service are that it is compatible with AD dependent apps. So it runs real Microsoft AD domain controllers, uses standard Active Directory features, for example, group policies, remote server administration tools, and so on. It is virtually maintenance-free, and it is highly available, automatically patched, configured with secure defaults, and protected by the appropriate network firewall rules. It has seamless multi-region deployment. You can simply expand the service to additional regions while continuing to use the same managed Active Directory domain. It has hybrid identity support, so you can connect your on-premises Active Directory domain to Google Cloud and deploy a standalone domain for your cloud-based workloads. Azure Security Center is a unified infrastructure security management system. It strengthens the security posture of your data centers and provides advanced threat protection across your hybrid workloads in the cloud. Azure Key Vault helps you safeguard cryptographic keys and other secrets used by cloud applications and services. Moving on to the functionality of Key Vaults, we have Secrets Management. You can store and tightly control access to tokens, passwords, certificates, API keys, and other secret encryption key. Moving on, we have Key Management, where you can create and control the encryption keys that are used to encrypt your data. With Certificate Management, we can easily provision, manage, and deploy public and private SSL certificates for use with Azure and internal connected resources. Last, we have hardware security modules, where secrets and keys can be protected either by software or FIPS 140 2 Level 2 validated HSMs. An HSM is a hardware security module. It's a piece of hardware designed to store encryption keys, and it looks something like this image here. Distributed denial of service or DDoS attacks are some of the largest availability and security concerns facing customers that are moving their applications to the cloud. A DDoS attack attempts to exhaust an application's resources, making the application unavailable to legitimate users. DDoS attacks can be targeted at any endpoint that is publicly reachable through the internet. When you combine DDoS protection with recommended application design practices, you help provide a defense against DDoS attacks. DDoS protection uses the scale and elasticity of Microsoft's global network to bring DDoS mitigation capacity to every Azure region. 
The DDoS Protection Service helps protect your Azure applications by analyzing and discarding DDoS traffic at the Azure Network Edge before it can affect your service's availability. There are two tiers associated with Azure DDoS protection, these being Basic and Standard. Let's start with Basic since this is what you are provided for free. The Basic Azure DDoS protection is already turned on to protect Azure's global network and it mitigates common network attacks. Moving on to the standard Azure DDoS protection, this starts at $2,994 per month and it provides complete metrics, alerts, and reporting of your web services. There is DDoS expert support available and application and cost protection SLAs are binded to this standard package. Azure Firewall is a managed cloud-based network security service that protects your Azure virtual network resources. It is a fully stateful firewall as a service with built-in high availability and unrestricted cloud scalability. You can centrally create, enforce, and log application and network connectivity policies across subscriptions and virtual networks. Azure Firewall uses a static public IP address for your virtual network resources, allowing outside firewalls to identify traffic originating from your virtual network. The service is fully integrated with Azure Monitor for logging and analytics. Azure Blueprints are used in much the same way as traditional blueprints are. In much the same manner that an engineer or architect uses a traditional blueprint to design and build to spec, IT engineers can use Azure Blueprints to design and deploy a repeatable collection of Azure resources that adhere to certain requirements and standards. By leveraging Azure Blueprints, engineers can quickly build and deploy new environments that are always compliant with organizational standards, and they can do so far more quickly than building new each time. A user can build and change artifacts such as policies and ARM templates and assign them to environments and version them using the method offered by Azure Blueprints. This makes it simple to manage versions, store these artifacts, and link them to environments. To put it in another way, it's a group of governance and resource services that let the subscriber repeat deployments to establish standards. Azure Blueprints allow the IT professional to orchestrate the deployment of resource templates and other Azure artifacts, including role assignments, policy assignments, resource groups, and resource manager templates. The service is back-ended by Azure Cosmos DB, which is globally distributed. Objects are replicated to multiple Azure regions to provide both highly available and low latency access to those objects, regardless of where the Azure Blueprints objects are deployed. Azure Policy helps to enforce organizational standards and to assess compliance at scale. Through its compliance dashboard, it provides an aggregated view to evaluate the overall state of the environment with the ability to drill down to the per resource, per policy granularity. It also helps to bring your resources to compliance through bulk remediation for existing resources and automatic remediation for new resources. Azure Policy is a service in Azure that you can use to create, assign, and manage policies that enforce rules over your resources to ensure compliance against corporate standards and service level agreements, or SLAs. An initiative is a collection of policies grouped together. An initiative simplifies managing and assigning policies by grouping them as one single item. Azure Policy is compromised of three components enforcement and compliance, application at scale, and remediation. You will have the ability to turn on built-in policies or build custom policies for all resource types, evaluate and enforce policies real-time, assess compliance and a newly added feature, VM in-guest policy that allows you to audit settings inside a machine. Azure Policy also allows you to apply policies to a management group with organization-wide control, apply multiple policies and aggregate policy statements with policy initiative and remediate on a real-time basis, which includes remediation on existing resources, a newly added feature. When maintaining control through policies, you design rather than a workflow. You have time to focus on other things like optimizing your environment. There is no longer a need to play custodian of the environment. The environment is designed to work for you, not the other way around. Access management for cloud resources is a critical function for any organization that is using the cloud. Azure Role-Based Access Control, or RBAC, helps you manage who has access to Azure resources, what they can do with those resources, and what areas they have access to. 
Azure RBAC is an authorization system built on Azure Resource Manager that provides fine-grained access management to Azure resources. There are a few key differences between Azure Policy and Azure Role-Based Access Control. Azure Policy evaluates state by examining properties on resources that are represented in Resource Manager and properties of some resource providers. Azure Policy ensures that resource state is compliant to your business rules without concern for who made the change or who has permission to make a change. Azure Policy through Deny Action effect can also block certain actions on resources. Some Azure Policy resources such as Policy Definitions, Initiative Definitions, and Assignments are visible to all users. This design enables transparency to all users and services for what policy rules are set in their environment. Azure RBAC focuses on managing user actions at different scopes. If control of an action is required based on user information, then Azure RBAC is the correct tool to use. Even if an individual has access to perform an action, if the result is a non-compliant resource, Azure Policy still blocks the Create or Update. The combination of Azure RBAC and Azure Policy provides full scope control in Azure. Here are some examples of what you can do with Azure RBAC. You can allow one user to manage virtual machines in a subscription and another user to manage virtual networks. You can allow a DBA group to manage SQL databases in a subscription. You can allow a user to manage all resources in a resource group such as virtual machines, websites, and subnets. You can allow an application to access all the resources in a resource group. The creation of consistent environments at scale is only truly valuable if there's a mechanism to maintain that consistency. Therefore, you have resource locking as a concept within the Azure cloud. Resource locking has modes and states. Locking mode applies to the blueprint assignment and it has three options. Don't lock, read only, or do not delete. The locking mode is configured during artifact deployment during a blueprint assignment. A different locking mode can be set by updating the blueprint assignment. Locking modes, however, can't be changed outside of Azure blueprints. Resources created by artifacts in a blueprint assignment have four states, not locked, read only, cannot edit or delete, or cannot delete. Each artifact type can be in the not locked state. The following table can be used to determine the state of a resource. If your organization has many Azure subscriptions, you may need AV to efficiently manage access, policies, and compliance for those subscriptions. Management groups provide a governance scope above subscriptions. You organize subscriptions into management groups. The governance conditions you apply cascade by inheritance to all associated subscriptions. Management groups give you enterprise-grade management at scale no matter what type of subscriptions you might have. However, all subscriptions within a single management group must trust the same Azure Active Directory or Azure AD tenant. For example, you can apply policies to a management group that limits the regions available for virtual machine creation. This policy would be applied to all nested management groups, subscriptions, and resources and allow VM creation only in authorized regions. You can build a flexible structure of management groups and subscriptions to organize your resources into a hierarchy for unified policy and access management. The following diagram shows an example of creating a hierarchy for governance using management groups. You can create a hierarchy that applies a policy, for example, which limits VM locations to the best US region in the management group called production. This policy will inherit onto all the enterprise agreement or EA subscriptions that are descendants of that management group and will apply to all VMs under those subscriptions. This security policy cannot be altered by the resource or subscription owner, allowing for improved governance. Another scenario where you would use management groups is to provide user access to multiple subscriptions. By moving multiple subscriptions under that management group, you can create one Azure role assignment on the management group, which will inherit that access to all the subscriptions. One assignment on the management group can enable users to have access to everything they need instead of scripting Azure RBAC over different subscriptions. Some key things to note about management groups are that 10,000 management groups can be supported in a single directory. 
A management group tree can support up to six levels of depth, and this limit doesn't include the root level or the subscription level. Each management group and subscription can only support one parent. Each management group can have many children. And all subscriptions and management groups are within a single hierarchy in each directory. Azure Advisor is a free service provided by Azure that provides advice on how to manage the availability of your resources, save costs on services, increase reliability, and generally ensure that your Azure account is healthy and that your services are well set up and managed and do not hemorrhage funds while underperforming. A good example of how Azure Advisor works is that say you have five virtual machines running, but two of them are not doing anything or are barely being used at all. Azure Advisor is going to recommend that you turn those two virtual machines off. Either that or you will be recommended to downgrade and downsize the machines depending on the usage scenarios.